Bob Palmer, Madeline McFadden, Larry Green, and Ron Zapolo. It lasted only about 20 minutes, but before it was over, a Denver policeman had been run down and killed and his alleged murderer shot to death by fellow officers. Good evening and welcome to News Center 4. The sixth Front Range police officer to die in the line of duty in little more than a year was killed today during a deadly chase that involved four law enforcement agencies and Copter 4. It all began as a robbery. It quickly became much more than that. With a new Center 4 crew swept into events, journalists usually cover but not participate in. Criminal justice specialist Jim West's report contains some very violent pictures, pictures you may find objectionable. Here's his report. It ended here at 53rd and Sheridan when Copter 4 pilot Mike Silva literally stopped the suspect. Seconds later, after a hail of police gunfire, the suspect was dead, his hostage released unharmed. The tragic ordeal began 20 minutes earlier here at 46th and Pecos. That's when police got the call that a credit union had been held up. The manager said it was over in seconds. The teller who was held up said she didn't see a gun, but she was terrified. Police responding to the holdup call spotted the getaway car a few minutes later. Copter 4 was taking pictures for an unrelated story nearby. Pilot Mike Silva and photographer Jim Stair were dispatched by two-way radio to the chase scene. They spotted the suspect vehicle at 50th and Lowell. I made an attempt to try to get in front of him so he could see me in the hope that he would back off and give up. Uh, I figured if he knew the helicopter was up there, this would, would uh, deter him from continuing the chase and uh, the whole thing would come to a, to a, a good solution here. Channel 4 chopper in the air. I wonder if they can uh, monitor this guy for us. My Channel 4 is monitoring clear apparently. 110, give us the location of the vehicle now. I know the police officers on the ground are aware of my presence. In fact, they were trying to uh, work a frequency so that we could, uh, we could communicate. Copter 4 is equipped with a radio that allows communication with police frequencies. But Pilot Silva was so busy trying to keep the suspect in sight that he was unable to program the frequency. At this point, the suspect turned north on Tennyson, increased his speed, weaving between police cars, trying to block his path. Seconds later, at 48th and Tennyson, he ran over plainclothes detective Bob Wallace, who was using his car to set up a temporary roadblock. Sergeant Terry Rogers watched the tragedy happen. Uh, he wanted to uh, try to get up from behind the car to, to get out of danger. And he tried to run for the curb, and that's when, uh, when the suspect hit him. Officer Wallace was killed instantly. Get me off the side out here. This thing's turned into more than we want. At that point, in my opinion, the whole complexion of this situation changed. And at that point, I decided that I was going to pursue this individual and do whatever in my power to uh, have him uh, arrested. Moments later, the suspect turned left on 52nd, lost control, and hit a tree. We can see him alighting from the vehicle carrying a black satchel. He knows we're up there. You can see him looking up at us. At this point, he's still running through some backyards. He, uh, uh, there's two vehicles in the parking lot. He unsuccessfully stopped the first one. You can see him here. Uh, point the pistol and shoot. In the car, a young woman and her 14-month-old daughter. They were not hit. Seconds later, Silva believes the gunman took a shot at Copter 4. He's fatigued. He is desperate, and from our view, view from the helicopter, we could see people standing in the yards, and Jim Stair, the photographer, and I are saying, you know what's next. He's going to try to take somebody hostage. And that's exactly what happened. Here in the Berkeley Village Mobile Home Park is the suspect approached John Lorienti and his daughter. Well, you can see him take the pistol, and he orders them into the vehicle. Now I'm thinking a hostage situation. Uh, he has the pistol, he's pointing to the back of the driver, the, uh, the older gentleman, and they're both getting in on the uh, passenger side. The female uh, is walking away. At gunpoint, the suspect forced Lorienti to drive away, and police swarmed throughout the neighborhood, but at this point, only Pilot Silva and Cameraman Stair know what vehicle the suspect is in. What the Denver police officers didn't realize, right here is a good indi uh, indicator, the suspect was crouched on the floorboards 
underneath the dashboard. The Denver police officer did not know that the suspect had commandeered that vehicle, and the Denver police officers did not know that uh, the suspect was on the floorboards in the front there, pointing the pistol. Pilot Silva then followed the truck into a nearby shopping center parking lot and brought his helicopter down to block its path. I placed the skids, the right skid of the helicopter. I'm facing the suspect. Uh, I, I placed the right skid on the hood and windshield. This vehicle still hasn't stopped. At that point, he points the pistol at me. Our Denver police officer at that point crashes his vehicle into the side of the, uh, of, of the green pickup truck. Photographer Jim Stair jumped out of the helicopter and recorded the freeing of the hostage and the death of the suspect. Final toll, one police officer dead, another slightly injured, and the suspect dead, but a hostage free. Jim West, criminal justice specialist, New Center 4. Police believe the suspect is from out of state. The first vehicle he used was stolen, as were the plates. The second truck, however, belonged to John Lorienti, who was innocently leaning on his truck talking to his daughter when the suspect kidnapped him. Luckily, Lorienti escaped injury. Tonight, after lengthy questioning by police, Lorienti went to a relative's home where he is now resting, trying to settle down from a harrowing day. The death of Detective Bob Wallace brings to six the number of law officers who've been killed along the front range in just over a year. Wallace's companions say few men were better liked or had more friends on the force.